For those of you guys considering to get a property on a shared ownership scheme, the government has recently announced that they're going to be reducing the minimum entry level from 25% now down to 10% guys. So you can put up even smaller amounts to own a portion of a property. Now granted you're going to be owning relatively smaller portions because you put up a relatively smaller deposit. But still, for a lot of people, this is an opportunity for them to get themselves on the property ladder with small amounts of capital. And some reports are saying that the ability to staircase, which is gradually increasing your ownership of that property over time, has now been made easier. So now you can staircase 1% at a time. So you can own that property 1% at a time, whereas before it was at least 10%. I'm going to be talking about all of this in this video, guys. So make sure to stay tuned to know what my general thoughts are. Hi, guys. Welcome to my DS Learn Finance channel. Here we talk about property investing, stock market investing, and financial management. Basically, everything when it comes to financial education. And we're only getting started, people. So if you like the sound of this, then you know what you have to do. Leave a like, share this video, and subscribe with the notification bell on too. But back into the main topic, shared ownerships. As I mentioned previously, guys, it's an opportunity for a lot of people to get themselves involved in property with a relatively small amount of money. But what I didn't talk about, what I didn't let you guys know is just because you buy a property and shared ownership doesn't mean the work's finished there. No, the main aim is for you to gradually own the whole property, own it all over time, guys. Now it's time to talk about what are the pros and cons associated with shared ownership schemes and hands down the biggest benefit of it all is that it's easier for you to get on your property journey guys. It allows you to get your foot through that property door with a relatively small amount of money but a hidden benefit guys is that it gives you more access to bigger, better and better properties in the best locations too. That would have taken several years longer via the conventional mortgage way. So this means guys that Shared ownership schemes, they tend to be closely tied with newly built properties and also in the best, most expensive areas too. But that's enough of the good stuff though, guys. It's time to talk about the disadvantages. For me, the most glaringly obvious flaw here is that you're being both the tenant and the property owner all at the same time, guys. So you're renting and you're owning all at once. You're kind of to some degree sitting on the fence here. And the reason why this can be seen as a problem in certain light is because you're not getting the whole benefits of being a property owner. So you're not getting the whole benefits of paying off that, that property over time, you're not getting the whole benefits of avoiding paying those inflated living rates just to stay in that property. Whilst from the renting angle, you're also not getting the whole benefits of the convenience of paying rent for a property either. So it then sparks the question, what are you benefiting from when you are on these sort of schemes? And only you can really answer that. A not so obvious disadvantage is that it can be challenging to sell your property after your journey, guys, because you've got a smaller group of people to sell to you. Why? Because not everyone that wants to buy a property wants to buy a property on a shared ownership scheme. It's quite a niche part of the property market, guys. And to some degree, it depends on how far along in ownership you are in that scheme too. Let's say you're at 75% ownership. You might find it harder to sell a property. Why? Because this is close enough to 100% that all the people that are looking to buy that property will just be thinking, why can't I just buy a property by the normal mortgage process anyway? So things can get really tricky there. I would say if you're looking at shared ownership schemes, then make sure you've got the ability to ride the wave throughout the whole journey. And my final issue on shared ownership schemes is the fact that it's a seller's market, guys. So the original property owners are really going to gain from it the most as opposed to it being a buyer's market where you would gain from it the most. It is not uncommon for those owners to overvalue those properties whilst they're offering their shared ownership schemes. Why? Because they know there's a dependency on them to offer that scheme in the very first place. So unfortunately, this means those owners like to take advantage of other people. So they set crazy prices and they set crazy rules that you would have to abide by if you're choosing to take on that scheme. Whereas if you were to buy a property via the normal conventional mortgage process, you've got more ability to negotiate the price down of that property. There's an even playing field there. But that's all I've got to say though, guys. I found this topic quite interesting. But what I want to know even more is what do you guys think of shared ownership? Leave it in the comment box below. But before you guys go, please tell YouTube how good this video was, guys. 
do that by liking this video, share this video too, and subscribe with the notification bell on as well. It's your favorite YouTuber, guys, Diesel and Finance, Financial Educate, you guys to freedom for the beginners, by for the beginner, every Sunday at 3 p.m. Bye, guys. Whoa. Whoa.